You've seen this bot in many of my videos, riding to Penang Bridge, riding in the rain, off-road adventure and a few others. This is a detailed review of one wow direct drive electric skateboard. So first of all, we're gonna start with the unboxing. It comes in a nice double box. The board itself and the packaging is really premium. The bottom part is made out of carbon fiber which makes it look even more premium. The motor sticks out like this. It is not a hub motor. It is not a belt driven either. Rather, it's a direct drive setup. Right off the box, it comes with a 97mm wheels. But of course, I instantly swap to another wheel set in the box which looks like this. This 105mm wheels is known as the Fomis and it comes included. And the first advantage with the direct drive setup is how easy it is to swap wheels out. It is like swapping a normal wheel. Quick and easy. So now, let's test this bot to the limit. This bot can go up to 50km an hour, but you can't. So don't do it. I tried to reach the top speed and fell down really bad and injured myself. So stick to mode 1 and mode 2, which is already super fast. It uses a double kingpin truck, same like the one in Evolve bots, which means it is meant for carving. With this truck setup, you can turn much much easier. Whether a simple turn, U-turn, carving, it will be 90% easier. Beginners that try this board will love it because how easy it is to do turns. Even my father can ride this skateboard very well. But for me, I'm not a fan of these trucks that much. Why? Because I prefer a board to be stable at high speed like the X1 Pro. But for most of you guys, you will like this. Many have tried and they like it because it is very easy to do turns. So let's talk about this big, not that big, but bigger than average wheels out there. It is really comfortable. It reduces road vibration significantly so you have more pleasant and comfortable ride. I will describe this wheel as more safe, more comfort and forgiving. Why it's forgiving? Because when you hit an even part of the road, you won't feel it that much and you will still be stable. With normal wheels you have to pay attention to the road condition. If you hit a rough surface area, you'll lose balance, but with these wheels, you can ride with ease on the road and worry less. What about off-road? This is not a true off-road tire. Sand, dirt, grass is not a problem, but if rocks and pebbles, it won't do well. First of all, it is not pneumatic, and second, this board is very low to the ground, so if you roll over big rocks, it will hit the motors. I've tried on multiple off-road paths, you can, but it is not comfortable. On wet roads, this wheel will grip more and skid less, but still, be careful. Talking about wet roads, this board is water resistant. You can watch how it performs in the heavy rain in Riding in the Rain video. And that's not the first time I test it in the rain. I've ridden it multiple times in heavy rain and have no problem so far. But of course, safe side is to avoid rain and wet roads, be safe and don't take risks. So let's talk about range. This board is rated to go up to 40km with the normal wheels. If using the big wheels, you should get around 35km real wheel range. Personally, I've never ridden it until it dies because this board doesn't show the battery value in percentage. It shows in lights like this. So when it's too far left, you will feel like you're running out of battery and get range anxiety. But remember, each light is around 10km so don't worry as you have plenty more range left. They told me in the future they will change the remote type to the one that have display and show battery percentage. So overall, this is a very solid high performance board. It performs very smooth and quiet like hub motors, but it is as comfortable as a belt driven one. So you have both in one board, making it a good board for adventure, leisure rides and group rides. The design is nice, it looks stylish and people will notice you more on this thing because how big it is. It is low to the ground so it's very stable. The deck is wide so standing on it feels very comfortable. But of course, like every bot, it have a slight disadvantages. First of all, it is big and heavy, so if you're commuting by a train or bus, it will consume a lot more space. It is around 11kg, but you can pull it like this, and it rolls freely without any resistance. Second, while being low to the ground is a very good thing because you're more stable, being lower also means that you have less clearance, and when riding through abnormal high bumps, you will scratch the bottom part, like me. But the bottom part is very strong carbon fiber so you don't have to worry that much other than scratching that sick looking design. So do I recommend this bot? The answer is yes. Although X1 Pro is my main commute bot, if group rides and long distance ride, I'll use this one. 
this more comfortable, more forgiving, and it gives more range. And if riding with others, you will ride it fast, so the easier turns is really helpful. So again, insane top speed, very good range, very comfortable, very stable, smooth acceleration and braking, easy turns and U-turns, good build quality, sick looking design, but heavy and consume more space. That's what you're gonna get. So that's it, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.